Somewhere deep in the basement of the Miskatonic University Library, there is a fact which would leave you totally and utterly mad. What hope had humans of comprehending that the angles in some triangles don't have to 180 degrees? In fiction, and especially in the stories of H.P. Lovecraft, often characters meet some alien being who lives somewhere where reality works differently. A particular favourite phrase of Lovecraft's was to say these places had non-Euclidean geometry. Usually, the very sight of such a strange, mind-bending place is enough to drive the protagonist a little bit insane. But what is non-Euclidean geometry? And would it really break our brains? Well, first, what does Euclidean mean? The word comes from Euclid, an ancient Greek who wrote the first great work on geometry, an incredibly famous book called The Elements, which has had more editions published in the 2000 years people have been reading it than any book except the Bible. In The Elements, Euclid goes about proving all the facts about circles, triangles, and parallel lines you're probably familiar with from school, like how angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. But proofs can't start from nothing, so there were a couple of claims Euclid made right at the beginning, which he had to leave unproved. We called these axioms. Now, most of these axioms are pretty obvious sounding. They're things like, you can draw a line between any two points. And you can draw a circle of any size around any given point. So Euclid was happy to leave them unproved. But the fifth and final axiom, also known as the parallel postulate, wasn't like the others. The others are nice and simple, but the parallel postulate looks more like a theorem, but nobody could figure out how you might prove the parallel postulate from the first four axioms. Still, people went and used these five axioms to do geometry. This kind of geometry, using Euclid's axioms or rules, is called Euclidean geometry. What is non-Euclidean geometry? It all comes down to that suspicious fifth axiom, the parallel postulate. It turns out that the search for a proof of it was in vain. In other words, you can do geometry just fine without it. If you do choose to do geometry where the parallel postulate is false, then this is called non-Euclidean geometry. Non-Euclidean geometry actually comes in lots of different flavours, because there are lots of ways the parallel postulate can be false. First, Instead of saying there's exactly one parallel line through any point, maybe you say there are none. This is called elliptical geometry. You can think of how this would look by imagining doing geometry on the surface of a sphere, rather than on a flat piece of paper. Here, what we call lines are the circles going around the fattest part of the sphere, such as the equator. If you take any two of these circles, they meet each other twice, so no two lines are ever parallel. As a bonus, the angles in a triangle add up to more than 180 degrees here. Second, you can say there are many parallel lines through any one point. This is called hyperbolic geometry, and it's a little harder to picture than electrical geometry, but by no means brain-breakingly so. To picture it in our normal Euclidean world, you have to picture doing geometry on a disc, and represent what we call lines with circular arcs which meet the edge of the disc at right angles. If you take any one of these lines, and a point outside of it, you can draw as many lines not touching it as you want through that point, so it has lots of parallels. Now, if you're still watching this video and not rocking backward and forward muttering Cthulhu Patagon, then congratulations, you've comprehended the horror of non-Euclidean geometry without your brain breaking. But, you might think, these ways to visualise non-Euclidean geometry, maybe they're in some sense cheating. After all, it seems like we're merely building a model of non-Euclidean geometry in Euclidean space. A little version of it we can look down on from the safety of our familiar Euclidean world. What would it be like to actually see non-Euclidean geometry from the inside? Well, there are a couple of things we can definitively say about this. First, you might not need to imagine being inside a non-Euclidean world, because our world might not be Euclidean. We know it basically looks Euclidean up close, on the small scales you'd do measurements on Earth at. But so does non-Euclidean geometry. We don't know what the universe looks like exactly on big scales, 
but it may well be non-Euclidean, especially given that the fabric of space-time can be bent by massive objects like stars or black holes. Second, you can actually try out being inside a non-Euclidean world. There's a free VR simulation of being inside a 3D version of hyperbolic geometry. You can try it right now in your browser. It's trippy, but it won't drive you to insanity. They may not break your brain, but in an important sense, non-Euclidean geometries are exactly what Lovecraft's fictional world was about. For thousands of years, we thought the world of geometry was safe and familiar, and small. We thought it was inconceivable any of Euclid's axioms could be false. But, much like the poor, poor humans of Lovecraft's works, who realise the universe is a tiny, insignificant part of a terrifying and weird greater reality, we realise that the familiar realm of Euclid was just one small part of a whole world of strange and unfamiliar kinds of geometry, which is certainly mind-bending, if not quite mind-breaking.